My name is Nicandro. I'm a spinal neurosurgeon and I work here in King's College Hospital, Dubai. I'm going to present about the new surgical strategies for the treatment of patients with Bertolotti syndrome. More than a century ago, Mari Bertolotti described this pathology, which consists of typical lower back pain at the paramedian region on the buttock area associated with pseudo joint or and this lumbosacrum transitional vertebra, usually ipsilateral to the pain. Typical example showing this painful pseudo joint visible on the X-ray and on the coronal view of the MRI. It affects around 5 to 10 percent of the population, but it's much more often among the young population with associated low back pain, especially paramedium pain. It usually starts the symptoms around 30 years old or so. There are a few main associated spinal disorders which come with Bertolotti syndrome. Primarily is the pain coming from the pseudo articulation, which suffers some arthrosis, especially omolateral, but sometimes even contralaterally. Lumbar disc disease, it happens quite often, including disc degeneration and disc herniation. Far out syndrome is also uh, another identified disorder, which is due to the enlarged TP, which causes some entrapment of the nerve L5 inside the foramen. And some cases also develop spinal deformity, especially for asymmetric pseudo joints. The clinical symptoms are typical chronic lower back pain at the paramedian region, associated with the enlarged TP at quite often with pseudo articulation. Also has a typical trigger point, and this kind of pain it's usually alleviated with uh, local injection of steroids and anesthetics. It can be seen by different images like X-ray, CT scan, and MRI. It's very important to use the Castelvi classification of lumbosacral transitional vertebra, which is type one when there is only a large TP in one or both sides. Type 2, there is a true pseudo joint, also only or, or bilaterally, is also very, very painful subtype. Type 3, instead of pseudo joint, there is a fusion of the enlarged TP with the sacrum. And type 4 is a combination of both. One side there is a pseudo joint, another side there is a fused enlarged TP with sacrum. Typical image of pseudo articulation between the enlarged TP of L5 with the sacrum and iliac crest. Uh, associate scoliosis with pseudo joint, visible on the X-ray and the MRI. Also, it's very easy to identify the pseudo joint, even better by CT scan. There are different uh, algorithms, this one from Almeida and colleagues, they described when there is uh, persistent lower back pain not responding to the conservative treatment, you should uh, suggest the patient the injection at the pseudo joint to analyze if there is a temporary uh, relief of the pain. If that's the case, so this patient is a potential candidate for the surgery to resect this pseudo joint. This injection I prefer to do by myself under sedation, use the contrast to identify the pseudo joint, and then inject the, the combination of bupfacaine plus methylprednisolone inside the pseudo joint. Expect to have temporary relief of the pain for about two to four weeks. If that's the case, so the patient can be submitted to the transverse prostatectomy. So the ideal candidate for surgery in case of Bertolotti syndrome is that patient with typical lumbosacrum pseudo joint pain on the, on the sides, which not responded to conservative measures and which has a temporary uh, improvement after the injection 
inside the pseudo joint. You have to always uh, pay attention to the possible associated spinal disorders, especially lumbar disc disease, disc herniation, postlateral or even far lateral disc herniation, disc degeneration, far out syndrome, which is entrapment of L5 nerve root uh, caused by the enlarged TP of L5, and other, other problems like scoliosis. Another example of pseudo joint, Castelv type 2A, lateral pseudo joint, which is an ideal case for surgery when it fulfills that, that, the described criteria, especially with the temporary relief of the pain after the injection test. The treatment consists of partial excision of this pseudo arthrosis or of the, related to this pseudo joint. Essentially, we disconnect the, this enlarged TP from the lumbar spine, so there's no more pressure from the lumbar spine to this pseudo joint, which is the source of the pain. So, we use this MIS paramedian tubular microsurgical approach for partial resection of this enlarged TP. Always uh, consider the possibility of uh, requiring surgery for the associated disc disorder, like microdiscectomy plus transverse prostatectomy, or MIS, mini open T leaf, plus transverse prostatectomy, which can be done during the same procedure. There are different uh, techniques, but essentially, for a transverse prostatectomy, it can be done under mini open approach, like described here, or uh, my preference, which is the MIS tubular microsurgical resection of the transverse process, which is also as described by the group of Cleveland Clinic, US, which consists of the incision and the paramedia region on the top of the TP. We use the tubular system to to localize the joint, and here they show the type of resection that can be done to release the, the pressure from the lumbar spine to the pseudo joint and also give more space for the L5 nerve root. However, sometimes it's difficult to do the that resection like on, on that diagram that we are going to suggest something a bit different on the following uh, slides. There are also new technology can be associated like the use of OR and neural navigation. So the, techni the technique that you're using currently is the following. This is one example of a young lady with this uh, typical uh, Bertolotti syndrome, which had a response temporarily for the injection test. Then we uh, went for the MIS tubular microsurgical transverse prostatectomy. Uh, it's very important to analyze in different uh, views the image available, including X-ray, MRI, CT scan, just to give some, some example, to measure and to calculate where you're going to cut the joint, because there are some places where the joint is very large, very deep, and also close some very important structures, especially the, the, sciatic nerve, the part of the sciatic nerve, like the L5 nerve root. So here we are, we inverted the, the image to be in the same position like the patient during the surgery and we display those images on the big screen uh, inside the operating theater. So the technique we are describing here is the MIS tubular microsurgical transverse prostatectomy in which we uh, make an incision. Before we did a, a bit smaller, but prefer to do a bit longer, around 4 cm incision by using a loop of the skin fascia, around 4 cm lateral from the midline to be on the base of the enlarged TP just beside the pedicle. But before we incise, we need to check by fluoroscopy this direction. Then we use the, the seconds for the insertion of the MIS paraspinal uh, tubular system in between the muscles docking on the base of the enlarged TP, also guided by fluoroscopy until this point. After we expose the base of TP, I remove the loop and start using the surgical microscope. Remember that during the whole procedure, using interoperative neuromonitoring and also ultrasonic bone shaver in order to remove the bone, especially the deeper part, close to the nerve, with less risk for the neuro uh, structures. So the type of, of cut that we recommend is vertical just beside the pedicle and then oblique 
inferior to the pedicle. Create a gap of about one centimeter to avoid reunion of this bone gap. You also apply bone ox to decrease the chance of a new uh, bone fusion and check at the end by OR. I prefer don't use neural navigation because it's a very dynamic procedure every time you are cutting, we we'll lose the reference. So what I do, I use it to locate by fluoroscopy and I checked at the end by the OR. This case we did recently, patient prone position, general anesthesia, using interoperative neuro monitoring. The incision we check by fluoroscopy around four centimeters from the midline, four centimeters long. Then by fluoroscopy, use these uh, guide wires, and until now, fluoroscopy and use my loop. Then we uh, we go for, with the sequential dilation tubes. Then after that, we check again. We install the we fix the the retractors on the spinal table, and we check by fluoroscopy the location which should be on the base of the TP of L5, just beside the pedicle. We can check on AP and lateral, like on this example. I used to, to use the four blades for a good retraction. And then this, this part, I remove the loop and start with the surgical microscope. This the surgical view during the procedure, which we cut the superficial part of the bone. I start from the, the upper limit of the enlarged TP, which is the easier part to identify. You can use this part osteotome or even high-speed drill. But remember, when you start to come deeper, I remove those, I don't use those tools anymore, and go for the ultrasonic shave, which is safe for the soft uh, structures. So cutting the TP. And the superior part is the limit, superior limit of the TP. The inferior limit you cannot see yet. We do this cut vertical just beside the, the pedicle, lateral to it. This is the ultrasonic uh, vibrate bone scalpel that I like to use for this kind of procedure because it's safer for the nerve. Cutting the, the end of the, the deep part of the enlarged TP. After we cut the vertical part, you have to cut obliquely in direction uh, to the nerve just below the pedicle. So this oblique part is the dangerous one which go very deep and close to the nerve which will be caudal to this part. So we, we use this diagram to guide the, the technique that you prefer. We can see here uh, marked the L5 pedicle, the enlarged TP, the bone to be removed marked in red dots, uh, which is lateral to the pedicle and then inferior to the pedicle. Uh, the pseudo joint should be therefore disconnected. You can find the L5, you can see the L5 nerve root just uh, close to the uh, medial part of the enlarged TP and the pedicle below. So we have to remember this anatomy, which becomes very clear during the surgery, but more uh, limited because you have the tubular approach. So I have a limited uh, view, but you can uh, have a good idea about these structures. After we we cut what we think is complete, and then we check by the arm. Then you should see that the TP on, on its base is completely disconnected from the lumbar spine, leaving the pseudo joint free. This posterior view by the arm, check that the, the enlarged TP is completely disconnected from the lumbar spine. The final uh, closure of the incision. This patient had a very good result. She went home at the second post-operative day with minimum pain in the lower back and she also had radicular pain, which improved immediately. In summary, those patients with typical lower back pain at the paramedia region associated with transitional vertebra and the enlarged TP, especially with pseudo joint, so type 2 or type 4 of Castelvi, they are potential candidates for transverse prostatectomy. Always potentially possible associated disc disease, which sometimes are also surgical, uh, and also far out syndrome. Have a good image, x ray, MRI, and CT scan. If there is no response to the conservative treatment, then I should propose to the patient the pseudo joint injection test 
like a pretest before go for the surgery. So if the patient has a temporary relief of this pain, you explain to the patient that that's the type of relief that you are aiming with the surgery. If he agrees so, that's what he wants. So we can proceed with, with the transverse prostatectomy and maybe also to operate on the associated disorders if they are symptomatic as well. Remember to use those uh, proper technique using um, tubular system, MIS tubular system, microscope, ultrasonic shave, which is safe for the, the nerve root, especially at the deep part of the bone, and uh, check at the end, if possible, with advanced uh, image uh, technology to be sure there is no bridge left between the pseudo joint and the base of the TP. And for uh, following those steps has a chance of having very good result for the majority of the patients. Thank you.